Të nëva të leqekuas, këte e në përsëri në biset, jemi me ishë kongresmenin Gjozef Diuguardi. Ju keni një eksperiencë gjatë e veçanisht për ekonomin. Kur ka qenë ekonomia me mirë në qëtë bashkohet Amerikës, si pas eksperiencës tuaj, një horive tuaj që keni në këtë fushë? I was born në 1940, just before World War II. But I was raised after World War II. The economy got very good after World War II because we started to do things that man manufactured many things, put many people back to work. Uh, there was the troops coming back. We gave them jobs. There was a multiplier effect so that we had a very good economy in the 1950s, 1960s, and 1970s. Uh, even now, the economy is not bad, uh, but you know, between 2008 and 2014, we had not a depression, but we had a recession because people did stupid things. They bought houses with too much debt, and they couldn't then serve, service the debt. Uh, the government did stupid things because, oh, everybody should have a house, so they gave the mortgages uh, too fast, and they gave them to people. Some didn't have jobs. And later, when they tried to collect, the money wasn't there. So now we are coming back. But now, if you looked at 2015, uh, our growth rate is somewhere between 2 and 3%. The rest of the world, Europe is not doing that well. China was 10, 11, 12. It's now down below 7. But we don't know how they count. They don't use the same system for counting, so we're not sure yet that it compares with us. So I still think that the United States has got the best economy, uh, but our danger is that our economy is too much consumption. 70% is people buying things. We don't export enough. We don't manufacture enough. Therefore, the jobs went from manufacturing, especially here in Detroit, automobile, steel, rubber, it went to China because of the wages. But now some of it is coming back. I still feel very optimistic about America but we need a good leader. That is coming now. We have a big election coming in 2016. We have many people want to become president. So it's got now a year and a few months to, to see who is the best possible for this job. I don't know, but I think America is gonna do better. But when I was young, the economy was perfect. It allowed my father to save a lot of money, to buy for cash a house expensive in Westchester County. Uh, and he helped me with my education. Uh, I have a brother and sister. So we all had a good start. Today, it's difficult for young people to buy houses, difficult to get married and have a family, more difficult than in the past. Is it possible? Yes, they're doing it. But it's not as good as it was before. We're, so we're changing. They, we're in a transitional uh, period now. Do të marrë një opinion nga jeta juaj, nga eksperienca juaj, cilin president do të veçonit si më të sukses shpin në drejtimin e Kongresit të Amerikan dhe përfajsimit të gjithë popullit të Amerikës? For my life, I would have to say President Reagan because of what he did to defeat the Soviet Union in the Cold War, open up the wall in Berlin, in uh, 1988, I think it was, yes, the, the, the wall came down. Uh, I think Reagan gave America a spirit of optimism that we could do things that were possible. Uh, so I would say, and then Reagan was the president when I got elected to Congress. And I felt that he favored the Republicans that year in 1984 because 45 young uh, 45 members of the house were elected when he was elected in 1984 i was the 46th no one thought i would be elected they had a count two two times more and then i won by maybe 2000 votes out of 300000 <laughs> We have one year, so anything you say now is speculation. We have to see the debates more, many more, 
and we have to see who wins in the states. We have the primaries. You have New Hampshire coming up first, then Iowa, then South Carolina, then Nevada. The polls now are favoring Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump is a businessman. He's a wealthy businessman, using his own money. He's not raising money. People like that because they don't trust money anymore in the United States because people using the money to buy votes and using the money to buy the elections, and that's not good. Uh, so the people are very upset. They're saying that Washington is dysfunctional. They're not passing the laws they should. They're spending too much money. We have to borrow from countries we don't like, like China. Um, so it's opened up a whole new gate for people who don't have the experience of government to say, listen, I'm not part of the establishment. I'm new, like Donald Trump. And now, do I think he's gonna be president? It's hard to say. People thought a few months ago he wouldn't last one month, and now he's still there. My feeling is that I will vote for a Republican, but if you ask me, of the 17, now I think it's 16 or 15, some dropped out, I would tell you that the person who has the most experience is someone I served with in Congress, and he's a Croatian American. His father was a mailman, his grandfather was a uh, coal miner, he's from Ohio, he's the governor of Ohio twice, he's in his third time, his name is John Kasich, Croatian American. He served with me in the banking committee in Congress, and then he served 18 more years, he was chairman of the budget committee, and then he went on to become the governor of Ohio. He's now in the bottom of the polls, but he was the last one to come in in July, and he's now going up, and I will be raising him money in December with Albanians. So that's, I feel, in the long run, he should be the one that will come up the highest when people know who he is. Just like Albanians didn't know who I was until I, I spent time doing the things that they like. Same thing with John Kasich. On the Democrat side, uh, and, and by the way, I don't think it's gonna be Jeb Bush, the son of, uh, no. I think the people are upset now with these families that, like the Clintons and the Bushes that have been there, they're saying this is not a dynasty. This is not a monarchy where you pass it on to the next one in the family, even because they have the names. And the same thing with Clinton. I don't think she will win. She has big problems. Nobody trusts her. If you take the polls, the worst poll for her is that more people vote that they don't trust her than trust her. Now, do they like her? Yeah, because Democrats like her. They want to see the first female president. But we don't know. Now you have Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, he says he's a progressive democratic socialist. He's from Vermont, U.S. Senator, was a congressman, and now 20,000, 30,000 people are coming to see him because he's logical, he's smart, and he's saying America now has too many people at the top that are rich and they're not sharing it with all the people at the bottom. So we have to change the tax laws, we have to change a lot of policies, and people like that. Uh, I will not vote Democrat for sure, uh, but I can see mm -hmm. that he is now becoming the popular candidate very early. But I will vote Republican, and my feeling is the person I'll vote for is the person that has experience uh, with the system because we're gonna need that kind of person to solve the problems we have. Të shpenzojme pak kohë këtu për uh, presidentin. Dhe pytja, zoti Dugardi, është lidur me rëndësin, a ka rëndësi presidenti i Shtetë Bashkot e Amerikës për qështjen Shqiptarja dhe në cila drejtime nëse po? Well, if I look at my experience... You understand? Yes. Why, why did I accomplish something for the Albanian people? It's not because I got President Reagan to do what I said. It's not because President Bush did it. I went to the Congress. You see, Albanians get confused with America because they are used to a parliament. Parliamentary systems, one party controls everything, just like in Albania. Not in America. In America, the president could be Republican and the House of Representatives in the Congress could be Democrat and the Senate could be Republican. Or like now, both houses in the Congress are Republican and the president is Democrat. 
But if you know how to approach these important leaders in the Congress, they are more important than the president. Why? The Congress has control of the money and the budget. And if they want something done and the State Department says we don't like it, and if you get people like we did, Joe Biden and Tom Lantos, and, and, and we had people like um, Ben Gilman in the beginning and Bob Dole, then the State Department gets nervous because they could punish the State Department by saying, now we're going to take the budget away from the State Department, and they don't like that. So you have to know how to lobby. You have to know that you cannot just lobby everybody. You have to lobby the people who are the chairman, the leaders, of the committees that are there. And that's what I did when I was in the Congress. That's what I did when I formed the League. That's what I did when I met Shirley. So we have this great history with important people in the Congress. I, I don't think it's that important. I think it's more important that we look at the Congress that makes the budget for what is needed in the world and lobby them and to get the hearings. If you don't have hearings, see the President and the State Department, they don't have the hearings that we have when we go to Congress so that people know why should we support the Albanian people. Now, can a President have an effect? A President strong. If a President feels that they want to do something, they can use the office of the president to make big pressure to do it. But that's not the way it's done usually in America. In America, it's usually the people who want something, they lobby for it, and they get powerful people in the Congress to do it. Look at Joe Biden. Look at the hearings I had with Joe Biden when he was the head of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He was pro-Serb. It took a while before we woke him up to the facts. And then he said in New York in 2002, I owe it to Joe and Shirley for shining a light on the problems of the Albanian people. And then he went on to do some important things. Without the pressure from Joe Biden, and without the pressure from people like Tom Lantos and uh, Henry Hyde, Clinton would never have dropped the bombs on Belgrade. He was reluctant to do it, but we lobbied so hard and made so many things in the media, you showed the film, you saw me on TV all the time, that then we pushed Clinton to drop the bombs because Milosevic, we said, will not quit. And he lies. And he's killing too many Albanians. You want another Srebrenica? Srebrenica, he put in one day 7,000 men and boys in the barn and they shot them. You're going to have another Srebrenica in Kosovo. In fact, just last week I told Dana mm -hmm. Robaka, we have Srebrenica today. You know where it is? In Presheva. But it's long time, Srebrenica, not on one day. The Serbs want to just take their time and they will deprive the Albanians of everything till they leave. So I'm making this case now by calling Presheva the new Srebrenica. Don't let it happen. Stop the, uh, the Serbs from taking the spirit, spirit away from the, the Albanian people of Presheva. So I will tell you, President's important, but my experience is the Congress is more important. Shumë falem derit, tani edhe i koa për sëri për tre kënë të tjera. You want three more songs? Three more songs. Well, now I have to go to my Italian-American background. And when I think of Italian-American, I think of uh, Dean Martin. Well, Frank Sinatra too, but Dean Martin, Tony Bennett, Vic Damone. And Dean Martin is my favorite. So there's a song that he sang on an evening in Rome. Now, I just had lunch with some Kosovars, and I said, when you hear the music of the Kosovars and the Albanians, it's about Lufta, the war, Flamorde, the flag. When you go and you hear the Italian music, it's about Amore, it's about love. So we have two <laughs> different kinds. So I like the Martin had the song on an evening in Roma, and I will sing some for you. Come belle c'è la luna e strette, Strette corobutu belle fastigia, sotel cella di Roma. On an evening in Rome. Mm -hmm. Do they take him for espresso? Yeah, I guess so. On each lover's arm, a girl I wish I knew. 
on an evening in Roma, though there's <laughs> grinning and mandolining in sunny Italy, the beginning has just begun when the sun goes down. So please meet me at the plaza near my casa. You are only one. <laughs> the girl. And well, well, thank, thank you. And I am well. one too few. So to Cella di Roma. So I think it's good to know that the Italians are singing about love while the Albanians are singing about guns and war and flags. It's a different experience. I have both. I have the Italian and I have the Albanian. Yo, yo, Shiptarat can music the Bukur. Well, I, I know that. Yeah. I know that. But when I'm at the table with the Albanians, they want to be talking about how they're going to win the war against the Serbs. They're going to do this, <laughs> they're going to do that. I was a new accountant in Chicago, and the most popular song was San Francisco. He sang the song, uh, My Heart is uh, in San Francisco. Beautiful, beautiful song. And then um, from there, let's see, what other play? There's a play in 1961 called How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. It had a Pulitzer Prize. And there was a song in there about the young man who wanted to become high, and he was always trying to do things to impress the boss. And he one time went into the bathroom to sing this song about uh, how he believed in himself. And he said, he looked in the mirror, and he says, I believe in you. You've got the cool, clear mind of a seeker of wisdom and truth, with the slam, tang, bang, reminiscent of gin and vermouth. I believe in you. Yes, I believe in you. And he's looking at himself in the mirror <laughs> <laughs> to, to get his confidence up to win. And I always like that song. Shum falemderit, besoj se shikosit do të kënaqen, të nërvatre shikos, indikim kanë në dhe këtejnë për sëri me Zotin Gjozef Dugardi.